just a couple of principal things that have to happen in the embouchure to get it to work for the brass player. One is that you have to create a foundation. Now for the trombonist and the euphonium player and the tuba player, that foundation, this is going to be true for your horn and trumpet players too, of course, but for low brass specific, you have to get this foundation that's really going to be a triangle that's sort of set up between the right hand corner, left hand corner, and the chin. And I try and keep things real simple in my mind, as in I want to think my corner's firm, but not pulling out, my corner's firm, but not necessarily pushing in. I sort of get them to mark time in place, right where they were. Then with my chin, I just get it nice and flat. And so I try to sort of create a triangle that's moving down to a point here. And across the top of the triangle, I get a nice relaxed lip. Now that's an important thing too. A lot of times, particularly when I was a young student learning to play, I believe that changing and playing notes were all about tightening and loosening the lips. I don't believe that so much anymore. I think it's more about control and size of the aperture. And you don't necessarily have to use the words aperture with young students. You can talk about the size of the buzzing hole or just the hole, the size of the hole. Larger to smaller, taller to shorter, um, wider to thinner. You can use terminology like that to help them think about this not being a point of tension, but a point of something that, that dilates and gets controlled to create higher notes or lower notes as it expands outward. So we do this by, first of all, getting a foundation set here, as I said before, think a triangle, firm chin, firm corners. The second thing is I like to, to conceptualize my lips being soft. You know, it's impossible to have your lips buzz if they're rigid. You can try this for yourself. Tighten your lips up, as we often preach in a class, tighten your lips up and try and get a buzz. Well, is all that's going to happen if you do that. Whereas, you know, a baby can go when they keep their lips soft. So I like to use the word soft an awful, uh, awful lot when I'm working with young students. Firm corners, firm chin, but soft lips. So something like this will happen. A couple things to think about with the sound of the buzz itself. You don't want a highly concentrated buzzy buzz like that. What you want is a, a buzz that has a lot of air moving through it. True, some of that air is getting wasted and not turned into buzz, but that's just a function of the soft lips can only buzz so much for any given pitch. So look for a full resonating buzz and don't concern yourself with getting anything overly concentrated like that. Let's hear what this sounds like on a mouthpiece. Um, it's, it's about the same. The, the buzzy buzz um, doesn't sound as full as that, if you'll hear a comparison. If you're getting sounds like that with your students on mouthpieces, they're over concentrating. Strive for something with a lot of air moving through it.